You, you're writing to the main leaders of the parties, aren't you, and challenging them to do more on homelessness. What is it that you want to see? I am. Uh, I'm calling for a much greater focus on what I would describe as a national crisis. If you go to any English city or town at the moment, you will see people huddled in the doorways. Uh, in 2018, over 700 people who were homeless died, many of them on British streets. This shouldn't be happening, in my view, in 2019. And my frustration a little bit is British general elections focus on uh, swing voters in key marginals, you know, so-called Worcester woman or Workington man, how about focusing on homeless woman and homeless man? You know, British politics would regain some of its moral purpose, in my view, if it spent time dealing with the real issues that we are facing on the ground. It feels like sometimes the election campaign happens in a parallel universe. And my purpose today is saying, look, come back to a real crisis that's happening now. To be fair, Jeremy Corbyn is the only person that has spoken about homelessness in this campaign. We need to hear detailed proposals from all of the three main parties. I just want to look at your record at tackling homelessness uh, in Manchester uh, as well, um, because there was an investigation by the Manchester Evening News uh, recently that said that Manchester is putting 411% more homeless families into temporary accommodation compared to 2015, six every day. And that last month alone, 1,700 people went to the town hall, either because they were homeless or they were worried about becoming homeless. So have you actually got a grip on the situation yourself? Well, this... this goes to the heart of what I'm saying today, Sophie, because I can't control those numbers that are presenting as homeless to the council. That's because, in my view, mainly the benefits freeze. So there's been a housing allowance freeze in benefits since 2016. So people's benefits have not been keeping pace with their rent. And that is a national issue. I can't do anything about that. What I can do is obviously try and help people who find themselves in that situation. So my commitment is around rough sleeping rather than the bigger question of homelessness. And what we have done here is create places for people to go every night of the week. In Greater Manchester tonight, there will be around 400 bed spaces across our 10 boroughs. No other part of the country is doing this. We recorded the first fall in the numbers of people sleeping rough last year after seven years of, of pretty massive rises. So I'm not saying but by any means that we've cracked it here, but we are doing everything we can to look after people, but we won't be able to do it unless there are real changes in national policy on the benefits freeze. That has to come to an end immediately, day one of a new government. But I would also say this question of no-fault evictions, where private landlords can basically evict people after eight weeks without any real reason. That, that too is a massive cause of homelessness in Greater Manchester. I want the general election campaign to focus on these specifics because homelessness is a national crisis, it's a humanitarian crisis. Nobody should be dying on British streets in 2019. OK. Um, now, Labour is finalising its manifesto today, big... Uh, meeting to try and get everyone together to work out what should go in the manifesto. And one of the uh, things that could be debated later is whether or not Labour would back continuing free movement of people from the EU if Brexit actually happens. And we know, of course, there are different opinions on this from within the party. You've spoken out before uh, on immigration, on free movement, looking at a piece that you wrote for The Guardian in 2016, for example, uh, you said that we can all debate what the referendum vote meant beyond the decision to leave the EU, but above all, I'm clear it was a majority vote for an end to the current system of free movement. So, given that you think that was the message of the referendum, do you think that Labour should back continued free movement after Brexit? I think the party needs to do a sensible deal with Europe that would allow change to the way we manage uh, migration. I've always said that. And one of the reasons I think people voted in the way that they did was a sense of unfairness between the way people coming from Europe are treated, but people from India or Pakistan or other countries get a differential treatment. So I think this is an opportunity to, to get fairness into the immigration system so that it deals with people uh, on the same level wherever they, they come from. And I, and I do believe that the public were asking for a reform of that kind. But I think what Labour is also right to be talking about is doing a deal that keeps us as close to Europe as possible. And I think they've got the only sensible position on Brexit in this election campaign because they are trying to bring the country back together. I think the Tories, on the other hand, have got a very hard Brexit position. I think the Lib Dems actually have got a very arrogant position. Just to say we'll revoke it all as if the referendum never happened, 
I, 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 honestly, I can't see how that position can do anything other than inflame the, the divisions that we have in our country. So to be fair, I think the Labour Party are wrestling with this issue. They are trying to bring the country back together. It's a difficult one, of course, because there are still different perspectives within the Labour Party. But I think they're right to be talking about a practical deal that keeps us as close to Europe as possible. Uh, and that, that I, I would say, is a very good position in contrast to the other parties. So just to be crystal clear then, listening to what you're saying, do you think that it's important that Labour should back a position where free movement of people ends after Brexit? I think the public voted for change in the way the immigration arrangements work with Europe. To deny that, I think, would be to deny what many people were saying when they went to vote in 2016. And that's just, in my view, a fact. And it doesn't help politicians, it doesn't help Parliament if they look like they're kind of cocooned away from that, that public view. But I think what we shouldn't do is sort of introduce wholesale change. You know, just, just some greater management of the system. I expressed a lot when I was the MP for Lee how free movement had allowed, in my view, the undercutting of wages. Some people debate this, but I saw evidence of it where people were, were brought in uh, by agencies from, from other European countries and it was used to, um, to, to bring wages uh, down. Now, you know, th those are the issues that need to be addressed. And it was good to hear Laura Pidcock uh, this week talking about much more sectoral bargaining to protect the wages of skilled workers, because I think that is one of the reforms that we need to see. Uh, and that is a change to the way free movement obviously has worked. OK. And now, of course, in this election campaign, as in every election campaign, you see uh, politicians hitting the battle buses, getting on planes, trains, visiting different parts of the country. Um, do you think there's been enough of a focus from all of the parties uh, on issues that aren't going to be particularly impacting the people that you represent in the north of England? Um, no. Um, I, you know, I, I, uh, I gathered at the start of this campaign, you know, the, the, the number 10 spin doctors were saying that they wanted Boris Johnson to connect with the North. Well, he certainly connected uh, with the voters of uh, South Yorkshire uh, this week. And I think this kind of shows the, the kind of superficial nature of the Westminster kind of operation. You know, you think they can just wander in and sort of do a photo op, but it's not like that. You know, there was a national kind of emergency developing last weekend and you know no one's focus was on that and those poor people in South Yorkshire were just left to what they were what they were doing so what I'm doing today as well with homelessness is hang on a minute you know we don't want a general election campaign that is just focusing on kind of sound bites and uh, kind of issues that kind of appeal to the the Westminster bubble how about grappling with the very real issues that people are facing take railways uh, Sophie there were terrible scenes at Manchester Victoria the other night we've had 18 months of chaos on our railways uh, and actually it even predates that but you know, where, where is the debate about that in this general election campaign? It's as if the kind of voters are living through quite tough times uh, on the railways, the issues with homelessness, and the election campaign sometimes feels as though it's happening in a, in a parallel universe. And um, if they're going to properly connect with the voters of the North, they have to say, what are they going to do about the Northern franchise? What are they going to do about investing in infrastructure? Are they going to give us London-style subsidies to run our buses? And are they going to give councils help to deal with the homelessness crisis? You know, these are the things that they need to address. And as far as I'm concerned, the election campaign hasn't got close to them at the moment. And just very briefly, you mentioned working to the man a bit earlier in the interview. Apparently, he's the voter who's going to decide the election. White man in his 40s, voted leave, didn't go to university, worried about crime. Do you listen to this and ever think, it's a bit reductive, it's a bit patronising? Oh, you're not kidding. And in some ways, it was kind of a, a complete uh, frustration with all of that that made me, in the end, sort of step away from Westminster. I, I, I think the system needs massive uh, reform. Um, you know, as I said, this superficial approach to politics, just focusing on key marginals and swing voters within those places, it, it needs to get back to a sense of a moral purpose for the whole of the country. Uh, and you know, deal with some of these major issues that we've, we're facing. Um, you know, I, I look at things from my perspective now, and I see the pressure on our councils, the pressure on social care. You know, we've all been promised solutions on social care. Again, it would appear to only be Labour that is making a very determined pledge on that. You know, wh where is the debate on those issues in this 
uh, election campaign. And my fear is, as it stands at the moment, Sophie, this election may solve nothing. And we may be back in a dysfunctional parliament in a few months' time with the rest of us in the real world dealing with things that they are kind of completely neglecting. And British politics needs fundamental reform, in my view. And actually, there are some green shoots coming through here, and it's called devolution in places like Greater Manchester. Westminster can't be the only show in town anymore because it's not dealing with things. Give more power out to the English regions, to cities like, like Manchester. Let us do more for ourselves. Because you know what? You'll find that there's a healthier politics okay. uh, when you do things in that way, when you, when you give people more power over their own affairs.